Turning back time to the past, at that time, many people gathered outside the city to catch the news. What's going on over there? Why are people watching that spot? I heard it's a muscular man. I don't dare to go there and see. Where, where? I love watching muscular men the most. Oh no, I mean, I love watching the excitement. Ten years ago in Huka City, Keith, the number one tycoon in the universe, was thrown down to earth this time. He didn't even have a piece of cloth to cover himself. He was used to appearing like this, clutching his head in pain. This time, I've transmigrated into an older man, he thought. Never mind, as long as I'm not dead. He stood up proudly, shocking everyone around. He's standing up. Oh my, it's so blinding. In his mind, he seemed to have a clear goal. Lady, I will find you, even if I have to reincarnate multiple times. The onlookers all fainted with foam at their mouths. Seeing everyone lying at his feet, he laughed heartily. Within a year, Huka City became Keats' possession. Anyone who opposed him would forever be lost in a dream built with money. Creepera asked Keith, Are you planning to enforce a listed price table? He started relying on Hiosomun. If we are of the same kind, can I inquire about someone from you? Creepera angrily cursed under her breath. This rotten man dares to ignore me. He continued, However, this is a random event. You might get a no answer if you ask him. Husaman curiously asked, You're looking for me to inquire about someone? Why, is that person our kind? He replied, Yes, a very special woman. Doctors observed Keith's every move. This guy's actions don't seem right. He laughed and said, Either that person hasn't arrived on Earth yet, or she will come one day. You know, our kind, pub, our ultimate destination is Earth. Oh, I really want to hear her tell me. Money can't compare to science. Science is priceless, he grumbled. Hiusoman and doctors were astonished by Keats' words. Hiusoman wondered, our ultimate destination is Earth. What does that mean? Doctors approached, exclaiming, oh my. Miss Creepera glanced at her. Hiusoman turned to her and asked, as a scientist and also a pui, who else are you friends with? She immediately denied, I don't have any. I'm not one. Creepera voiced her thoughts, science is priceless. It sounds like something some scientists would say, right? When I met a little friend who liked to play the game of being a scientist, Keith pretended to be surprised. Creepera seized the opportunity and proposed, if Mr. Keith is interested, let's make a deal. Let me give you a hint. You can tell me about Puby and some special coordinates. Doctors deeply resented Creepera, this woman to the core. Keith thought for a moment, hmm, I am very interested in your proposal. We can talk. She confidently replied, I trust Mr. Keith is a man of his word. I will immediately give you a hint, and then I have other matters to attend to. Keith regretfully asked the chairman, You're not mad at me, are you? I was a bit heavy-handed earlier. While talking, she kept touching Hiusaman, making him uncomfortable. He asked, What are you trying to do now? Creepera answered Keith, Of course, medical expenses cannot be reduced. That woman who loves science probably has something to say to you. Doctors had been holding a grudge against her the entire time. As she finished speaking, Creepera took Hiusaman by the hand and led him away. He exclaimed, Why do I have to go with you? He thought to himself, so, the person Keith mentioned is really doctors. Judging by the reaction, it seems so. Creepera brought up an old story. You forgot about the pillar. Why didn't you poke me when I was looking for my love? Aren't you going to explain it to me? Keith looked at Dr. S and said, Could it be you? He politely asked Mr. EGA to give him and the chairman some privacy. He wanted to speak with the lady alone. After a few seconds of silence, he asked doctors, if you don't want to, I can take you away. She told him, go with her. I will come to find you after I'm done. Hiosomun turned back to confirm, are you sure? She frowned and answered, if I am not sure, what can I do? There is an old matter that needs to be resolved. Miss Creepera was trying her best to drag him away. Keith had to ask Mr. Ejue to invite them to leave the room temporarily. In room 8808, Delicate hands lightly brushed the door handle. Creepera, using her seductive charm, greeted the esteemed guests. 
doctors approached the elderly guest and said, Science and money don't follow the same path. The guest seemed very fond of doctorus and responded sweetly, When you were that person in a past life, I was captivated by your innovative inventions. I worked hard to earn money so that you could invent freely without worrying about funding. Seeing his perverted demeanor, doctors felt a bit panicked. I really don't have such thoughts. Please don't cling to me. Let go. He stubbornly pursued, My pure soul is devoted to you. No matter how many times I reincarnate, I will only love you. Doctors held her head and lamented. No need to talk about anything else. The main issue is that in this life, with your current appearance, I can't handle it. Though it sounded a bit hurtful, he still tried to persuade her. I have the money for surgery. It's a minor issue. Watching this complicated relationship, Hyosomon could only exclaim, What is happening here? Suddenly, from behind, Creepera draped her arm over Hyosomon's shoulder and said, Why are you standing there in a daze? Are you planning to be a third wheel? A few minutes later, both Hyosomon and Creepera were in the same room. She looked at him and said, If you don't want to sit on the sofa, you can sit on the bed. Hyosomon immediately questioned her, you deliberately lured Dr. S and me here, didn't you? She didn't care and directly threw her bra at Hyosoman's face. He said, Doctors has taken the bait halfway. She responded while removing dried squid. Actually, I'm not very interested in doctors. The person I want is you. She thinks she is smarter than others. People like that are the easiest to deal with. As events unfolded, she threw the piece of dried squid she had just removed at Hyosoman's face. He wrapped himself in a towel. Creepera continued, She has a bad habit of treating others like fools. I like being an actor. Whatever she wants, I give it to her. He skeptically asked, You deliberately had her bring me here, not to tell me her story, right? Don't rush. The person was just injured. Let me bathe and apply some medicine first. Creepera moved closer to Hyosaman, her demeanor becoming more seductive. He grabbed her hand. Creepera excitedly asked, can't wait any longer. Contrary to her expectation, he someone glared at her and said, you and Keith fighting, for whose benefit? She maintained her tone, isn't it clear, you know mind reading. Can't you read my thoughts? Read what you want me to see? What are you and Keith performing? It's just a minor dispute. You lied to me. He someone's hand widened as he lunged at Creepera grabbing her by the neck and pinning her to the floor. She laughed excitedly and said, You can be a bit rougher. Realizing she was crazy, he let go of her. Creepera slowly sat up, rubbing her neck as she began to recount. Crazy women can be very scary too. Keith and I talked, but I wasn't content just being the chairman of Apurica. I wanted more. She grabbed a bottle of wine nearby, poured herself a glass, and downed it before continuing. Keith. That unromantic fool directly rejected me. So, we fought. Creepera held the towel that was wrapped around her chest and suddenly tore it open in front of Hyosomon. Compared to Keith, I want to work with you more. This world is so old-fashioned and boring. Together, we can make it more interesting. Everything can be satisfied. She started laughing like a mad woman again. Hyosomon extended his arm, grabbed the towel, and wrapped it back around Creepera before leaving. If you want my help, just say it directly. No need for seduction. That way, I can directly refuse. In the very room where Hyosomon and Creepera were meeting, he said, you treat others as fools. You do things without my consent. Let me be clear, I don't care what shape this world takes. So, whatever scheme you want to carry out, don't consider my existence. Realizing that her seductive plan had no effect on Hyosomon, Creepera reverted to her true self. She sternly asked, If there's danger to those around you, will you still not care? As expected, when it came to his friends or family, Hyosomon's attitude changed. He glared at her and said, Remember, I protect them. That's very important to you. These words made her tremble. Creepera sat in a corner, face buried in her hands. As Hyosomon reached the door, he turned and said one last thing. Chairman Creepera, goodbye. Good luck with your scheme. It turned out she wasn't trembling but was acting. She laughed eerily, you are making me want to create more events with you. 
numerous metal rods with hard scales shot towards Hyosomon. He sensed them and counterattacked. A massive explosion occurred, filling the room with smoke. Amidst the chaos, Creepira emerged, lunging towards Hyosomon and pressing her chest against his face, making him extremely uncomfortable. The more you reject me, the more I like you. I don't like being passive. This intense rejection feels incredible, but it's still not enough. Hyosomon looked her straight in the face and said, Chairman Creepera, I am Hyosomon, not your ex-boyfriend. Look closely. Are you not being polite with me? She responded, I want you to be impolite with me. Moving from bewilderment to astonishment, Hyosomon thought, the number of strange women around me keeps increasing. In this difficult situation, doctors kicked open the door and strode towards Hyosomon, witnessing this awkward scene. Seems like you two are having a fun conversation, doctors remarked. Let's not hinder each other with sarcastic remarks. Hyosomon turned to Chief Creepera for protection. The game should end now, I still have things to do, he asserted. She replied, it's not about eavesdropping on special coordinates. I have my own part to play. Earlier, the old man also entered inside. Why is appearance so important? Shouldn't science treat everyone equally, he questioned. Doctors began to feel uncomfortable. Because he keeps following me around, he started to get annoyed. Can you please stop bothering me? He started to get angry, feeling rejected over and over again. What's stronger about this dark-eyed guy? Hughesomon couldn't stand it anymore. Is dark circles causing trouble? Doctor spoke out what he feared most. I've fallen in love with someone else. I'm heartbroken. It's clear to me now. At the same time, he turned away. I've had enough, trying to find you for so long, he said, hoping not to hear it again. Please don't trample my love for you, no matter who you are. Then Keith appeared dramatically and declared, Just kill Hyosomon, and you'll come back to me. This is the first time we fought against each other, and it's going to be interesting, said doctors, surprised and trying to intervene. However, everything was already too late. Keith had begun to unleash the power of priceless creatures, a beam of light binding the eyes emerging, advancing towards Hyosomon. He managed to be surprised for a few seconds before being sucked into another dimension. The two women beside him were quite shocked by this dire situation. Meanwhile, Hugh Summon found himself in an undefined room, surrounded by virtual images. Everyone knew they had landed slowly and faced the aged face of the Hugh Summon who spoke to him. I bought your life, said the old man, leading Hugh Summon puzzled. Which part did I buy? Everything. My ears are really itching, he someone replied and activated his preparation for battle, for life. Following the words of Keith, I fear that he cannot repay the debt. The battle between Hio Soman and Keith was about to begin. One side looked up with anticipation, while the other stared down with determination. Keith clasped his hands together, conjuring a strange golden light. To doctors, it was priceless. He had to have her. Your presence has shattered my lifelong efforts, Keith remarked as he directed the light towards Hyosomon, who stood unaware behind him. Three giant mirrors appeared side by side. Hyosomon stared at them, puzzled by their purpose, until he caught sight of his own reflection. He turned to Keith and probed, infiltrate my mind and attack my spirit. Why can't you come up with something new? Keith chuckled confidently, in my realm. One can only submit to me willingly. No need for anger. This process isn't painful but rather quite comforting. After all, it satisfies the deepest desires within. Hyosomon shook his head in resignation. You won't find satisfaction. Keith remained arrogant. Anyone who isn't a fool harbors desires. Beneath Hyosomon's feet, cracks appeared, overwhelming Keith. He muttered in astonishment as Hyosomon's strength far surpassed his own. Hyosomon walked calmly forward, as if ascending stairs, and remarked casually, if you're not doing business well, don't go. This time, the three mirrors shattered into pieces. Fragments of memories involving characters Hyusoman had encountered before emerged from the broken pieces. Hyusoman shouted, stop mimicking others' fights. Keith's face turned pale, but he tried to retort. They're all the same species. Why such a stark difference among your kind? 
Hio Soman glared at him, then unleashed his power. A colossal stone statue emerged behind him. Did I not say I am of your kind, he challenged. Keith cautiously licked his lips and responded, I know you're a psychic. Can you resist the illusion I create? As Keith finished his sentence, Hugh Soman flew straight towards him. Can you afford what I demand, he questioned. Keith's hands could no longer move. He tried to maintain his stance, but Hugh Soman asserted, You lack respect and fear for others' lives. It's despicable to control another's life while disregarding their worth. You can't afford the price. Hio Soman withdrew his hand behind him, causing Keith to ask in bewilderment what he intended to do. Teach a lesson to your family, Hio Soman said, as the shards of broken glass from earlier suddenly saw his hand appear. Hio Soman extended it numerous times, each aimed at Keith's body and face. In just a few seconds, the rune Keith had originally created was immediately shattered by Hio Soman. He returned with a strike that left him unconscious. Doctors was amazed, asking how Hu Soman disappeared for only three seconds and then returned. Hu Soman arrogantly recounted that this elderly friend of hers seemed unable to pay for my desires. Doctors then leaped up, clarifying that this elderly acquaintance was just an old friend. Creepera behind them looked on, admiringly amused. Why bother with the act? He said, just let Hio Soman handle it. Hio Soman then turned to Epurica and said, Creepera. I apologize for disrupting your plan. Additionally, she gave her two words, which Apurica eagerly anticipated. Hyusaman was about to utter something childish when he laughed with satisfaction. At the moment, he fell. Hyusaman asked him a question. Is each world you reincarnate into truly yourself? Trying to cover his embarrassment, Keith asked in return, Isn't that obvious? Hyusaman stood up and said to him, It seems to me that only memories I've accumulate for you. Keith burst into laughter. So you're quite special because of the PUBs I've encountered on Earth. I know they're all similar. Either they possess someone's body, or they directly transform. Maybe they're bugs. I haven't encountered many. Upon hearing this, he Soman fell silent and pondered for a moment. Several hours passed in the blink of an eye, with voices echoing in front of a company undergoing demolition. He Soman and doctors walked down that street together. He asked her, can you guarantee you won't use me as a lad rat? Doctors considered and replied, I refuse to answer. Your proposal sounds quite valuable for research. Hiosoman surged forward, leaving doctors behind. Then forget about being a scientist like yourself, he said, because in scientific research, anything goes, especially when scientists have no moral boundaries, unlike you. Doctors pouted and retorted, let me study a bit or else you'll just have to walk back. I don't like being controlled by others. Hio Soman thought of Son Goku or Superman flying in the sky. Why do superheroes fly like this, while Eastern geniuses ride on clouds or swords? Is it a matter of following a template? Doctors hesitated at his expression. What are you murmuring about, he asked. Hio Soman continued, I want to experience flying on a sword once. The principle of sword flying changes with the app link in the sword world, but Earth's energy source is unclear. It seems impossible. Doctors pondered his appearance and asked, What are you muttering about? Hio Summon still thought about that difficult problem, but whether it's sword flying or American superheroes, their essence is anti gravity. He proudly lifted his hand. It's simple to fix. He looked at her and laughed mysteriously. Doctors stuttered, Fix what? Suddenly, he Soman lifted doctors by the arm. Put your right foot on the left foot. The left foot takes a step on the cloud, right? Doctors explained, the operation performed by the system will not increase overall mechanical energy. Before he could finish, he Soman jumped up. The final point of science is theology. A fantastic leap is successful. He Soman successfully executed it and both soared into the sky. Doctors began to panic, covering his face. I have a sensitive body, and I can't endure excessive changes in value. Hio Soman shouted in human language, Doctors is so scared that he screamed in midair. I can't play the role of the first superspeed spaceship, he said upon hearing this. He stopped and asked, Isn't it that all who have ventured into science have a heart and die for science and technology at any time? Don't you want to research our status? 
doctor slowly opened his eyes to take in the scene before him, seeming not yet accustomed to it. After a few initial attempts where he lost the first letter of his words, he had to take a deep breath before he could speak normally. Impressive, he managed. I didn't expect us to fly all the way to the stratosphere. I can barely breathe. Indeed, 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 replied Hyosomun. Everything I've accumulated has proven useful. Hyosomun and doctors floated midair, with Hyosomun about to execute a bold intention to open a teleportation gate. Doctors looked at him and called out, wait a moment, as Hyosomun darted straight down below, causing doctors even more fear. Wait for me. There was a quick thud as both safely landed. The spot Hyosomun chose for landing was his Hyobu family's house. Emerging from the smoke, he startled Hyuksum and Wanjiol. Doctors, who arrived shortly after, was catching his breath in gasps. He wore a pitiful expression as he scolded, I really hate fast men. Hooksum, feeling uncomfortable, replied, Next time you go out, you don't need to be so serious. Just act like you're going to the market. Hyosomun chuckled lightly in response. I didn't expect it to be so fast either. Suddenly, he noticed the pile of leaves beneath Wanjol's feet and remarked that it seemed like the first test he gave Wanjiol had been passed. Hooksum sighed and pointed at the boy, saying, Though he succeeded in finding fifteen marked leaves, he didn't pass within the hour. He then looked up at the sky and asked, Why did you fall from the sky like that? Why haven't I seen this skill of yours before? Proudly scratching his itch, Hyusomun replied, Do you know a technique where one falls from the sky? He grabbed Hyuksam by the collar, asking if he wanted to learn it. Wan Jiol, standing behind, sighed, I've tried various methods, but none have been successful in finding fifteen marked leaves within an hour. I feel useless. Hooksum sighed again at Wan Jol's attitude. The test was so easy, and yet you didn't pass. If we go to war tomorrow, we will only lose. Hooksum said the sky was getting dark. The final deadline set for three hours later also must be nine o'clock in the evening. If you cannot pass the test, you should stay at home and do logistics. He turned and asked Hyosomun if there were any results. Right. Hearing this Hooksam was delighted. If your work efficiency is so high, why not spend a few minutes tomorrow helping me find the first and second brother? We can discuss it later. I need to say a few words to Wan Jiol. Then he approached him and asked Wan Jiol what is the starting point of this mission? Have you ever thought about it? The kid looked at him and thought. Hyusoman continued, the so-called strength. One aspect is the objective combat power, the other is Hyuksam jumping in to stop you from mentioning it. Such a simple truth if you don't know it yourself. Passing the test due to a hint, it would be meaningless. He pulled Hyusaman aside and hinted, Go into the room and tell me what you have been doing for the past few hours. Over there, Doctors was still in a daze. Dear Motherland, who can give me some motion sickness medicine? Hooksam waved his hand towards Wanjiol. The leaves under his feet immediately flew wildly. He said Wanjiol think carefully. The two of them walked while talking. At this moment, Mayamio also approached and asked if he was home. I was looking for you. What's up? Mayamio grabbed his hand and dragged him away. Come back to the room with me. I want to do an experiment. Mayamio blatantly snatched Hyusamun away in front of him, which made him so angry that he trembled. He shouted Mayomio Hyusamun is mine. The next day at Keats' company, he was discussing with Cree Para. Madam President, I have lost. This has cancelled our cooperation. She replied I am very clear about the strength of Mr. Keith after this incident. I still want to continue cooperating. Let's resolutely give up Chiangwi Saja and instead invest in me. Keith responded the other day when you approached me for cooperation, were you really thinking of attracting or just promising? Hyusoman stopped waiting for me. Kripera silently observed his words. Keith continued I can agree to cooperate with you. Madam Kripera, the higher you climb, naturally, the more profit I will get. This is mutually beneficial cooperation, but Chiangwi Saja is not something I can give up if I want to. Kripera asked what do you mean? He held his head and lamented, They are all millennium old foxes, don't joke with them. I went to Hyosomun's house, Mayomio took him to a room. After entering, she locked the door as if with an ulterior motive. At this moment she spoke up, 
Why think of making me a guinea pig? So she asked him to sit down next to her. Hilasaman didn't know what to say, so he decided to follow along. She lived with Natunu and it wasn't bad. She replied, I really have realized a lot of necessary things for a person with mental power from her. But I still try to keep my distance from her. The succubus clan will unconsciously emit charm around them. Talking to her for a moment, I almost fell in love with her. Hisaman thought, then I am very happy to see that scene. This way, you won't bother me anymore. Hearing this, she seemed upset. Hey, I'm at least a level 3 mental power user. I still have some self-control. Husaman curiously asked, Right, what kind of experiment are you planning? Suddenly, she became gentle, closed the door, and sat on the bed. How do you feel? Husaman thought, I think I should be the one to experiment first. Then he cast a control spell on her. Surprised by this sudden action, she asked, What are you doing to me? He revealed a cunning look. I'm going to conduct a deeper structural analysis. The power of President Tiongo can completely achieve a non-binding material state by utilizing the attractive forces in matter. Mayamio reacted violently. The structural analysis power is used for teasing. Let me go, let me go. Hyusaman smiled wickedly. The experiment has just begun. His expression was so frightening that it made her panic. What experiment? You're not this kind of person, are you? His hand gradually reached for her body, and internally she was in chaos. Oh no, I actually have some anticipation for his next move. How could this be? But he had already noticed. You forgot to block your inner thoughts from me. Exposed, she had no way to deny it. Hyusaman smugly said, Weren't you very coy? What happened now? Myomio immediately spoke up openness is my unrepresentative personality. I'm a random person. Hiyasoman explained, you called me to the room like this, so I cooperated, which helps increase the success rate of the experiment. At this moment, he pressed her hand down, I'm a very cooperative person, right? Suddenly, she stopped resisting, yes, you are indeed a very cooperative person. If you are serious with me, I will forgive your unreasonable actions just now. Suddenly, upon hearing that, he became silent. A loud noise erupted from outside, and both Soryuk and Wangadam burst in, along with Natunu and Ilda. They were all stunned by Hyosoman's actions. At this moment, he spoke, I was wondering how long you could hold out outside. Still in the room, Hyosoman stepped off the bed. At Myomio's pleading, Hey, you have to let me go, he agreed. Natunu, curious, asked, How did you know I was up to something? After releasing Mayomio, she angrily said, up to something? I don't understand. Seeing her attitude, he teased, didn't you say you were very confident in yourself? Couldn't you sense even a little oddity? Do you remember why you brought me back to the room? She confidently replied, of course, for the experiment. Suddenly, she realized something was wrong. Hyusaman thought she might have forgotten what the experiment was supposed to be. Why do I have to do the experiment? You started the fire, so you have to put it out. Natunu couldn't help but laugh. Have you learned? Yes, I have. Ilda behind them thought. The timing of using charm magic is very important. The target must trust themselves, not just be lost in hallucinations. Knowing she was the test subject, Myonio was furious. You used me as a test subject. Husaman, helpless, remarked, and you're supposed to be a level 3. Ilda explained, Sister Mayomio, we didn't mean to tease you. You're the only person with mental powers in the house besides us. This is training methods to deal with people with mental abilities. Wangdadam, seeing her reaction, softly asked, Mayomio, are you angry? She was so angry she couldn't speak. Suddenly, Netunu grabbed her hand and held her back. Do you like me? he asked. Mayomio felt once again ensnared by his charm. Such unusual behavior would instantly leave the enemy's mind blank. Natunu pressed further, you don't like me. She then embraced Natunu passionately. Stop it, he said, don't act like this. Turning to her two siblings, she said triumphantly, do you like my entertaining teaching method? I don't need to explain the principles anymore. Isn't her skill level too crude? They both seemed very impressed. After a few moments, Mayomio regained her composure. 
I was enchanted again, she thought. Netunyu now had a cunning look on her face. That's right, Chief Lam. Your problem is that your emotions are too easily stirred. You need to be more careful from now on. Feeling humiliated in front of so many people, Myonio pushed her away. I understand, she said. In the silence, a sudden scream rang out. Hugh Summon guessed it was Wan Jiol's voice. Outside, Hugh Sam was practicing something with Wan Jiol. It seemed like he had learned something that made him extremely excited. I get it now, stay calm and patient, Hyuksum thought. Seeing Wan Jiel perform so well, Hyuksum thought, let's go, let me see your strength. My attention was focused on finding the leaf with the number 15 symbol. If these leaves were the enemy, the remaining leaf was their hiding place. If you can't distinguish the enemy, it's better to strike at the environment first. Hyuksum was also surprised by his ability. Each leap started to react, hovering around him. It seemed he had just mastered a new skill. The training ended and continued in the courtyard of the house. Hyosomen and Wan Jiol were focusing all their energy on mastering the new move learned from Hyuksum. This isn't foolish, I understand the meaning of this test now. I really am too easily distracted by trivial matters. Hyosomen then patted Hyuksum on the shoulder. You did well, Hyuksum, you've learned how to teach. Encouraged by the praise, Hyuksam became enthusiastic. This guy is from the universe after all, he said proudly. But he had forgotten where he was and turned to Soryuk to ask, What day is it? The answer exceeded his expectations. Any day is fine, they both said, showing their happiness. Suddenly, Hyuksam sensed something was wrong. An unexpected explosion occurred, making everyone there alert. Inside the house, hearing the loud noise, they hurriedly ran out to check the situation. As the smoke gradually cleared, the silhouettes of a group of people emerged. The explosion had originated from Seoul's direction, creating a shockwave. Dust filled the air, but within seconds, the smoke began to dissipate. Unexpectedly, Woljip had managed to block Hugh Summon's attack. It's been a few days, Woljip said excitedly. Hugh Summon, angered at seeing him again, kicked at Woljip but he easily dodged and countered with a straight punch. Tayop Chansom helped me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have recovered so quickly. Why don't you consider teaming up with me? Woljip taunted. It seems you're tough to handle. I'll have to beat you until you can't recover, Hyusaman replied. Hyusaman landed a punch that broke Woljip's arm. Despite this, Woljip remained arrogant. What will you do to kill me, he sneered. Annoyed by his chatter, Hyusoman delivered a stronger punch, dislocating Woljip's arm and driving it into his jaw. The punch was so fast that Woljip couldn't react and was sent flying into the wall. After teaching him a lesson, Hyusoman declared, This time, I'll make sure you compensate for the damage to my house, the repair costs, and the emotional distress caused to my parents. Despite facing overwhelming strength, Woljip still managed to speak. What are you talking about, Hyusoman? He asked, slowly getting up. Hyusaman responded, I'm calculating the daily essential expenses. Blood began to flow from Woljip. Why do you look down on me? Woljip asked, visibly shaken. Hyosaman, filled with contempt, replied, I despise those who destroy everything without any regard for others. Pointing to the damage they had caused, he continued, My room, my house, this wall, and even the roof. You claim self-defense but I insist on compensation. If you can't pay, then you'll repay with your life. Unfazed, Woljip responded, so you're forcing me into a deal, ha. Huh? Their battle resumed. Woljip struck first with a straight punch, which Hyusomun easily blocked and countered. Woljip retaliated by kicking Hyusomun in the face, but it wasn't enough. Hyusomun caught Woljip's leg and slammed him to the ground. Seizing the opportunity, he launched a flurry of punches to Woljip's face. Witnessing this battle, even Myomio and Wanjiol were stunned. Hyusaman grabbed his hair and lifted him up, punching him so hard that he flew far away. His strength was terrifying, causing a huge explosion. But from within the smoke, his voice emerged. Don't waste your energy. Look, I'm getting up again. Hyusaman then seemed to transform into a different person, his aura filled with murderous intent. What level of destruction will it take for you to shut up? I'm really curious. 
yet he remained unfazed, saying casually, I'm just here to play. You don't have what it takes to make me shut up. Before he could finish his sentence, Husaman dashed forward and kicked him straight in the face, breaking his teeth. Not giving him a chance to recover, Husaman immediately followed up by grabbing his neck. Witnessing Husaman's actions, Mayamio thought to herself, What's wrong with Husaman? Why does he look like this? Returning to the fight, after catching him, Husaman threw him with all his strength to a far distance, disappearing from sight. It seemed like it was over but Hyosoman quickly took off in pursuit. Worried, Myonio exclaimed, Hyosoman, where are you going? Suddenly, a dark-skinned man appeared, blocking her path. Where do you think you're going? He asked menacingly. She became anxious. What should I do? Hyosoman is so ruthless. I've never felt this kind of intense unease before. Switching to the fight between Wanjiol and Soul, Soul taunted, your bodyguard brother is having too much fun fighting to care about you anymore. Come on, you weaklings, let's save some time. Wanjiol, undeterred, responded, I can handle this on my own. Hearing his confidence, she laughed derisively. You think you can do it? Your wounds healed and you forgot the pain, right? Let's see if your bones are harder or your mouth. Unable to stand her arrogance, Huxum stepped forward. This girl over there thinks I'm to be trifled with the consequences will be dire. However, Wanjiel stopped him, Master, I can handle this. In disbelief, Huxam asked, What did you call me? Wanjiel repeated, Master. Huxam fell silent, then patted his shoulder, Go ahead, disciple. Show this man what I've taught you. As the battle was about to begin, Soul taunted, Your clan has only you left. It wasn't easy for someone to save you. Just then, the people accompanying her also appeared. The four of them were among the strongest, and they should have valued their lives. One by one, they left to find worthy opponents, except for a girl hugging a teddy bear who was dragging her feet. She had to shout, Don't dawdle anymore. I know, I know, the girl replied. The battle between her and Wanjiol seemed to have begun. Wanjiol generated a surge of power in his hand. Last time, weren't you also beaten badly by someone else? He said as he unleashed a wave of energy towards her, but she easily dodged it. Soul arrogantly responded, This time, if I don't cripple you, I'll kill you. Don't think it'll be like last time where you beat me so badly. Feeling confident, Wanjiel thought to himself, Talking so much, losing will be very embarrassing. Suddenly, Mary timidly asked, It seems like there's nothing for me to do here. Can I go back? Hearing this, she snapped and cursed. You just want to go see Hyosaman, don't you? Stay here and finish the task for me. Meanwhile, a dark-skinned man approached Huxum. Hey, you over there acting all cool, come play with me for a bit. Huxum laughed. You dare to ask the great me to play with you. But the man was not to be underestimated either. You really don't think before you speak, he retorted, and began to display his technique. Countless blades appeared behind him. Huxum exclaimed in surprise, Sword Sect Technique, I've seen this move in books. In another scene, the girl with the teddy bear was crying, I'm so tired. Wang Edam turned in the dust and said, I think you should just come back with me. It'll save a lot of trouble. However, Wang Edam, feigning impatience, said, Enough, hurry up and fight. Her face darkened. You know I have a habit of sleeping in. If I don't get enough sleep, I'll be very angry. Myomyo, confused, grabbed Ilda. I'll take Ilda to find Hyosomon. You guys handle things here. Metunu reassured them. Don't worry, leave it to us. Take care of my sister. Ilda didn't want to leave her sisters, but Wang Adam reassured her, trust me and cousin with Hyosomon. Don't fall for their tricks. Back with the girl, she showed her disdain. Although I hate trouble, I'm not afraid of it. Fighting four of you alone isn't too big of a hassle. Myonyo, hearing this, warned, don't get too happy too soon. Returning to Soul's situation, she continued arguing with Mary. Could you please consider my situation, elder sister? Soul sighed, visibly losing interest. I'm completely drained. This is such a waste of time. Growing increasingly furious, Soul grabbed Mary by the collar. Do my bidding, or I'll kill you. I'm truly ruthless. 
She then flung Mary away, right onto the path they were walking. Helpless, Mary tried to stop them. I'm sorry, I have to do this. Please don't go. Seeing the scene unfold, the child with the cherished teddy bear spoke up inappropriately. Princess running away. Looks like you've met your match. Seems like you can't handle it. Natu Nu gently asked her younger sister if she was sure about her actions. Despite her determined demeanor, Natu Nu recognized some traits of their tribal leader in her. My little sister seems to have taken on the mantle of leadership. You and our other sister really bring a lot of trouble to Hyosomun. After a while, Natu Nu decided to intervene. Reluctantly resorting to this form, horns and a devil's tail began to sprout from her head. It was a formidable display of power ensuring Hyosomun's house remained intact this time. With so much turmoil and distress among their parents and household staff, the old lady foresaw the imminent loss of their home. Naitunyu started using her magic, forming a destructive sphere that shattered Hyosomun's residence, much to his displeasure. She then launched it into the sky, opening a gateway that engulfed the entire area of Hyosomun's house. This astonishing turn of events left everyone stunned. Yet the little girl remained calm, stating, I want to separate us. It's just a little mischievous calculation. Wait a moment, and I'll turn each of you into my dolls. She revealed a grotesque face as she spoke. Meanwhile, Natunu continued to manipulate the dimensional gateway, fulfilling her desires. The battle between the Hyobu and Chiangwizata families finally erupted. A short-haired girl, wielding spatial magic, used her immense power to create a sky full of plush toys. Proud of her strength, she boasted about being able to create an independent world. In her own words, this place was a whimsical wonderland. Wang Gatam started to feel annoyed by her incessant chatter. If only her mouth was as lazy as her body, he muttered, ignoring her babbling. The girl clung tightly to her teddy bear, Il Tong Chin, and retorted, If we're ranking mouth strength, I'd be at the top. She whispered to her plush toy, Bear, tear her up. With that, she tossed the bear into the air. Wangadam immediately became wary as a small crash sounded, and a white smoke enveloped the area. From within the smoke emerged a fierce beast with sharp claws, a giant bear, previously just a plush toy. It charged toward Wangadam, causing the ground to crack with each step and emitting terrifying roars. Despite facing such a daunting opponent, Wang Gedan refused to yield. A brat with a milk-scented mouth like hers thinks she can scare me. He scoffed. Without hesitation, he began to unleash his own powers. Pink smoke emanated from his body. Wang Gedan confidently extended his hand towards the approaching bear. He conjured a magical technique known as the dual illusion scenario, and the girl giggled mockingly. Your tricks won't work on my bear, she taunted. True to her words, the bear seemed unaffected and continued its relentless assault on Wang Adam. Fortunately, he managed to evade its attacks in time. Enraged by the child's defiance, Wang Adam swiftly formulated a solution, eliminate her physical form. Drawing his bow, he molded energy waves into pink arrows, aiming precisely at his airborne target. The speed and precision of his attack were astonishing as the arrow pierced straight through the girl's body in midair. The battle between Wangadam and the teddy bear-wielding girl continued fiercely. As Wangadam landed and turned towards her, he realized the issue. The body pierced by his arrow was merely a decoy, while the girl stood confidently nearby, mocking him without a care. Wangadam regretted overlooking the giant bear still at his side, which quickly seized the girl's leg in its powerful grip. Amidst insults and taunts from the opposing faction, threatening to create vulnerabilities with each strike. The girl continued to belittle Wang Adam. The bear's other arm moved swiftly toward Wang Adam's beautiful face, poised to deliver a devastating blow. With a defiant scream, the girl declared, I'll tear you apart and make you my puppet. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the battlefield, Netunu had transported Hyosumun's parents to safety using displacement magic, reassuring and calming their spirits. She'd assured them, don't worry. They're safe within the illusion. No one can disturb them, and they won't affect reality either. Hyosomun's mother sighed in relief, grateful for Natunu's presence. She remarked, If it weren't for you, and if we didn't have a home anymore, Hyosomun would be furious. 
the father added, but we still need to repair our home's walls. Natunyu smiled brightly at them, maintaining the delicate balance between the illusion and reality. She hoped no one would intrude upon them, saying confidently, I trust them. Returning to the duel between Wang Adam and the plush girl, she challenged him. Get up, Wang Adam. Were you feeling so confident just now? If not, I'll come and scratch your legs and arms. Unfazed by her remarks, Wang Adam stood firm behind her. People always believe in what they want to believe, he remarked. With those words, he threw the bear at the girl, causing her to fall. Who said my dual illusion technique has no effect? He taunted. Disheartened, the girl looked back in surprise, recognizing a familiar voice. How could this be? It was clearly you. She said as Wang Adam revealed his mastery of manipulating the bear with his mental power. Just as planned, Wang Adam winked and concluded, nightmares are just a continuation of disappointment. Let's gently wrap this up. The battle involving Wang Adam had escalated into chaos, with buildings crumbling and debris flying everywhere. Despite this, Wang Adam's created world remained intact, allowing Natunu to set aside her worries. She could now comfortably assume the role of clan leader. Unbeknownst to Natunu's true intentions, she simply wanted a quick vacation. Hyosoman's mother, relieved after the recent danger, commented that she almost had to intervene herself. Hearing this, Hyosoman's father signaled for silence, fortunate that Natunu had heard the question about her involvement. She skillfully used her adult compassion to guide the malicious individuals. Their obedient behavior might have made Natunu suspicious of their true identities, but she reassured them that they could be trusted. Both parents breathed a sigh of relief, successfully concealing their anxieties. Meanwhile, back at Wang Adam's location, the teddy bear girl's sobbing echoed in front of him. She expressed her admiration, unable to comprehend her defeat. Wang Adam responded with clarity, stating that he initially thought she hugged the bear to appear cute, not realizing her childishness. He advised her to return home to find her parents and cry there, showing a trace of camaraderie. Wang Nadam assured her that he wouldn't be too harsh this time and promptly disappeared from her sight. Overwhelmed, the girl resorted to clinging to Wang Adam and crying, pleading to stay by his side until she could defeat him. Concerned for her well-being, Wang Adam worried she might be seriously ill. Meanwhile, in another corner, battles were on the verge of commencement. Saul, with Wang Jiol, Huxim, and the eyepatch-wearing figure, prepared for their conflicts. Sawol ignited flames enveloping her entire body, causing Wang Jiol to feel a bit perplexed. Slowly approaching him, Sawol reassured him she wouldn't kill him and detaining him would serve a greater purpose. Recognizing her intentions, Wang Jiol reluctantly acknowledged her intuitive approach. In response, he generated a green light encircling his arm, questioning Sawol's desire to become stronger. At this moment, Sawol also rushed over, shouting, Stop talking nonsense, little brother. Wang Jiol directed his hand towards her. Beams of light formed and shot towards Soul. However, she easily blocked the attack with her bare hands. This move is useless against me, she said. In every misfortune, there is a silver lining. The attack had blocked her path, forcing her to stop. Unexpectedly, those blue beams of light were actually magic with electrical currents accumulating in Soul's hands, making her cautious. What is this? My power suddenly increased by a level, Soul said, excited as the electricity flowed through her body. Interesting. You little brat, you lost control of your power, didn't you? And it converted into my energy. I have to thank you very much. She didn't notice the eerie silence of Wang Jiol. He smiled confidently and replied, In battle, Giving strength to the enemy, you wouldn't really think the opponent is stupid, right? So Wol was still very pleased as her power naturally increased. I certainly don't think you're stupid. On the contrary, I'm even more interested in your family's physique. Suddenly, Wan Jol's voice changed, dying has meaning. I don't understand what you're saying. Wan Jol charged with his thunder fist missile. You don't need to understand then. Another explosion occurred behind Wang Adam leaving her puzzled. Strange, what is Wang Jiol doing? On Hooksem's side, the two were having a swordsmanship contest. The bespectacled man launched numerous magical swords. Hooksem could only destroy each one with his hands. 
he looked proudly at his disciple. True to the title of my obedient disciple, also very smart. The bespectacled man shouted, You little brat, where are you looking? Suddenly, the scene before him made him change his expression. Hooksom had successfully grabbed a sword. Hooksom said, In general, I wasn't looking at you. The bespectacled man became more serious, creating another weapon and holding it in his hand. You underestimated me too much, I won't forgive you. This time, it was a sharp sword. Hooksom threw the sword behind him with a disdainful tone, I underestimate you. Isn't that very clear? Wan Jell's trick is very interesting, I also want to try it. Looking directly at the bespectacled man, Hooksem arrogantly said, Guinea pig, come here so your family can have some fun. In response to Hooksem's harsh challenge, the bespectacled man remained calm and said, I know very well about you. Ever since you came to Earth, it seems you haven't won a single match, right? His words sounded gentle, but to Hooksem, they were like 10,000 knives stabbing straight into his heart. Hooksem stiffened, his face hardened, while the bespectacled man continued, Maybe when a man can't win, he talks a lot. Hukesom stretched and replied, Let's finish this with a fight. The bespectacled man's sharp sword moved forward. Hukesom pressed his hands on both sides of it, slowly crushing it into pieces. After destroying it, he said, Kneel before me and sing Conquer for me. A blue magical area formed right under the bespectacled man's feet. Immediately, light burst into a pillar shooting straight into the sky. A stone armor equipped itself onto his body. Hooksom, still indifferent, asked, You think you understand me? You will have to pay for your assumptions. In response to Hooksom's warning, the bespectacled man launched two heavy missiles. When the distance between Hooksom and the missiles was just a few centimeters, Hooksom acted, Don't confuse magic tricks with fighting. The area around Hooksam was shrouded in smoke, but he remained unscathed, using a fireball to attack the bespectacled man. This move was called Point Collector Protector. Seeing the speed of the fireballs Hooksam launched, the bespectacled man questioned, Too slow, as if you're intentionally letting me dodge. I'm intentionally not dodging. My illusory armor's energy is absolute defense. He decided to block the attack with his fist, hit me back. The collision between the stone hand and the fireball shook the entire area. The sound of shattering grew louder. He underestimated the power of Hooksom's fireball, which gradually consumed the bespectacled man's arm. One arm was completely obliterated by the crushing power of the fireball. The bespectacled man was shocked and asked, What? How is this possible? He thought the power of a single fireball was already so strong. Why use another one? He flew up high realizing that the intelligence he received was completely wrong. Unfortunately for him, two fireballs chased after him. Soon, they appeared on either side of the bespectacled man, leaving him astonished. The next moment, the two fireballs closed in on his flying legs, simultaneously destroying both sides, leading him in a desperate situation. In an instant, he fell in front of Hooksom, his body now a wreck. Hooksom then said, you think that just because others can endure it, you can too. I am the number one in the universe, not just number two. I came to Earth from thousands of miles away to be a servant to anyone. Why? Because he has crippled all his limbs, and he can only writhe and curse the heavens. Another fireball was created by Hukesom. I intended to spare your life, but you know too much. If you die, you won't tell anyone how many times I lost. Just in time, Let's test this micro-level attack I just mastered. The bespectacled man screamed in utter fear. No, no, don't. As his scream echoed, the fireball exploded. The greed within Iltong Chian shattered. The match between Myomio and Mary also ended for some unknown reason. Little Mary had collapsed into Myomio's arms, her head spinning. Ilda quickly supported her, saying, Sister Myomio, I'll take her aside. Returning to the most anticipated match between Wanjiol and Soul, we see Wanjiol kneeling and panting heavily, while Soul stands in a strange pose. Miraculously, somehow Wanjiol had convincingly defeated Soul, and the injuries left were like medals for him. Looking up at the sky, he said, I won. The world created by Natyunu was gradually being dismantled. The bubbles began to burst audibly. Hiusoman's parents, surprised, asked, 
How did Wan Jiel defeat his opponent earlier? Why is he also seriously injured? Unable to see clearly or hear well, Met Yunu responded, Uncle and Aunt, I'll explain everything shortly. Meanwhile, Hyuksim held his head in distress, lamenting, How dare he? In front of Taeyap Chansom's residence, he pondered, The kids we sent over there seem to be working very hard. From behind, Hyusoman called out, You're also very strong, being able to know the situation of your subordinates from so far away. Taeyap Chansom looked at him and replied, Parents and children are always spiritually connected, aren't they? Never mind, each generation has its own fortune. Let's settle the matter between the two of us now. Hivasoman stood up and said, You are older, please go first. You're very polite, young man, I really like you. Come work for me. Five insurances and one housing fund. Strange life form. Paid annual leave every year. If you don't agree. Hivasoman interrupted, I've already refused. Are you too old to remember? The old man smiled wickedly and asked, Your parents only have one child, don't they? I feel sorry for them. Suddenly, something enveloped Hyosoman's body. In just a moment, his body was encased in ice. In a certain dimension, his body was immobilized. Hyosoman glared at the old man and questioned, Old man, how could you stealthily attack me? Chiang Wisaya had been captured. After battling Hyosoman's group, they were tightly bound and lying in a corner. Mayomyo complained, this really wasted a lot of time. Ilga urged, let's hurry and find Hyosoman. I'm really worried about him. From behind, a mysterious blue light pillar appeared. At that very spot, a loud explosion startled Mayomyo and Ilga. When they turned around, both girls witnessed a colossal spectacle. A few minutes earlier, at Taeyup Chansom's mansion, the old man's expression changed as he rushed towards Hyosoman. His attack speed surpassed that of thousands of people. In no time, he reached Hyosoman's left arm. Unfortunately, Hyosoman's body turned into an illusion, causing Taeyup Chansom's strike to miss and inflict no damage. The old man was stunned and retracted his hand. Hyosoman looked at him and sneered, Don't be too alarmed. Don't be scared. As long as you can surpass the escape velocity of a black hole, you'll be fine, won't you? How can you use your powers? Didn't I erase your abilities? Hyosoman replied calmly, You did indeed erase my earthly powers. Otherwise, I wouldn't have realized you were attacking me just now. Taeyap Chiansim paused and asked, What do you mean? Hyosoman closed his eyes and began to float upward, spreading his arms wide, leaving Taeyap Chiansim bewildered. Looking down at the old man, Hyosoman said, What I mean is, the only thing you erased was my earthly powers. Understand? The old man stared in shock. As an earthling, are you the creator god? I'm an atheist, Hyusoman retorted, slamming his hand down. Taeyap Chansom's hand trembled so much that he had to clench it tightly. I know a legend. A rather perplexing battle. He continued, his eyes following the young man flying upward, straining his neck to look up. From above, Hyusoman asked, what legend? Taeyap Chiansim seemed still unwilling to accept the reality. Sweat began to pour down. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. I was truly foolish. Could that legend be true? Young man, stop pretending to be mysterious. Let's have a decisive battle. With those words, accompanied by action, Taeyap Chansim's demeanor appeared resolute. He wanted a life and death match with Hyosoman. Hyosoman, without hesitation, accepted the challenge. Fine, old man. This suits me perfectly. Don't lose too quickly, senior. He watched as the old man pressed his hands together, generating an extreme aura that formed an immense black hole behind him. Controlling the black hole with ease, Taeyap Chansim moved it from his palm, shrinking it before expertly releasing it in a straight trajectory towards Hyosoman. Boasting about his skill, he said, I never thought I'd use this technique so lightly. Hyosoman simply smirked, accelerating downward. Holding back is hard. I need to have some fun. His actions puzzled Taeyap Chansom, who furrowed his brow. What's this kid doing? What happened next took Taeyap Chansom by surprise. Hyosoman charged straight into the black hole. Something even more extraordinary occurred. 
Taeyup Chan Sim spat blood after Hyo So Mun entered the black hole. The old man questioned himself, What's happening to my body? Hyo So Mun's voice echoed from within Taeyup Chan Sim. So, this is how Earth's abilities are formed. Fascinating. Despite the excruciating pain, Taeyup Chan Sim had to use his power to expel Hyo So Mun from his body to save himself. A green flame appeared in Taeyup Chan Sim's hand as he berated, You truly are a freak. No matter what you are, nothing in the universe can escape a black hole. I want you to die in my black hole. Taeyup Chan Sim's plan wasn't just to expel Hyo So Mun, but to destroy both the black hole and Hyo So Mun inside it. It sounded terrifying, but from within the black hole, Hyo So Mun taunted, I'll be waiting inside your black hole. Cracks in space began to spread around the mouth of the black hole. Meanwhile, he summoned found himself wandering through a universe of planets. Observing his surroundings, he mused, I said delivering a fatal blow first would be deadly. Given this situation, if you stubbornly defy me by your reasoning. Tayap Chiansim had turned into a colossal stone statue in this space. The statue emitted Tayap Chiansim's voice. I don't care what you are. Everything is under my control. Hugh Summon looked up at the statue and asked, Didn't you mention a legend about the creator of abilities? What if I truly am the creator? The cracks reappeared, extending this time towards Hyo Soman's feet. He continued to question the old man. You and your brother brought abilities to Earth, didn't you? This brings back some unpleasant memories. The statue suddenly became animated. A giant stone hand lunged directly towards Hyo Soman. Surprises always come at the last moment, but Hyo Soman didn't bother dodging instead using just his index finger to block the attack. Long, long ago, there were two brothers, one wicked, one righteous. Heaven and earth were at odds. Another hand swiftly aimed towards Hyo Soman's right side, appearing more serious this time. It managed to grasp and lock both of Hyo Soman's hands. Regardless of what the old man did, Hyo Soman kept on narrating, from this perspective, I may have been overly sensitive. Old man Taeyap Chiansim squeezed tightly, threatening. Hyo Soman's voice echoed from within the stone hand. In the next moment, a dazzling light directly shattered Taeyap Chiansim's stone hand. Hyo Soman slowly emerged from within, a loud explosion from the crack, accompanied by the shattering of those stone pieces. The green black hole still spun in the sky, creating the universe's most beautiful scene, transforming all sceneries. Gradually, the black hole shrank and disappeared from the sky, restoring peace. Taeyap Chiansim couldn't accept what was happening. He knelt down, pounding his fists into the ground in sadness, vehemently declaring it couldn't be. However, Hyo Soman stood before him, and yet he didn't recognize. He looked up in surprise at Hyo Soman, asking his question. If I were to die, wouldn't Chief Chiang go avenge me? Hearing such doubt, he angrily gritted his teeth in response. You truly think so little of me. Immediately afterward, he grasped Hyo Soman's legs with both hands, gently pleading, tell me who you really are. Hearing the question, Hyo Soman was taken aback. I request you not to be so weak, he responded. I cannot accept someone calling me weak. Hyo Soman shouted loudly at the old man. What were you doing just now? Hyo Soman looked at him intensely growing angry and unable to speak. Hyo Soman quickly grabbed his hand and complained, You are one of the most important people to create Earth's abilities. Hyo Soman continued speaking. Just as I finished speaking, he lightly chuckled, naturally relying only on himself. I truly don't feel inspired. Hyo Soman turned his face back and bluntly asked, Isn't that right, just like my older brother? Under Hyo Soman was Teriak. Kiongo stood with his hands clasped behind his back, his deep, gentle voice echoing, which seemed to annoy Taeyup Chansom. He extended his hand forward, using his cane to continue speaking. It truly makes me feel quite embarrassed. After speaking, he stared intensely with an unsatisfied look. Husoman shifted his gaze entirely towards him and asked the chairman to handle Purisense's child. Is the great divine retribution making it difficult for you? He laughed loudly finding it interesting. Unfortunately, he couldn't feel the breath of Taeyap Chiansim. His eyes began to stare at someone. Chiango gently asked Hyo Soman, let the association handle the next thing. 
After hearing the chairman say this, he gently flipped Taeyap Chansom on the ground and said, It's fine. Afterwards, he stood up and put his hands in his pockets. Ban Tone asked the chairman, Am I not a member of the association? The chairman stood at the end, his expression unchanged. Meanwhile, Taeyap Chansom was still lying on the ground, his face clearly showing frustration at what Hyu Somun had done to him. Chiang Go calmly explained, You're just a temporary employee, not yet on the payroll. This place assigns tasks to specialists, that's all. After hearing this, Hyu Soman waved his hand dismissively, Anyway, I haven't officially joined the association. I've decided to withdraw. Without waiting for a response, he continued, As a good young man, if I see injustice, I'll lend a hand. I'll use my status as a good citizen of this city to handle Purisense's child. Hearing this, the chairman became furious. He grabbed his cane and slammed it forcefully into the ground, cracking the tiles. He shouted loudly, unable to contain his anger. Hyosoman added, I see, Chairman Chiango wants to protect old man Taeyap Chiansom. Well, that's fine too. At the very least, let me be a witness. The chairman looked at him sternly, his mouth confirming, If we can't meet even this lowest condition, then I can package everything up. Just go home and have a chat. Suddenly, Chiango's gaze shifted towards Taeyap Chansom, who was lying flattened on the floor. What are you waiting for, Chairman? he asked, turning back to continue. How long will he lie here disgraced? Hyosaman suddenly realized something. His eyes gleamed challengingly yet calmly. Isn't it interesting that both of you are here? I want to see your true strength, he remarked. After the two brothers teamed up, Taeyap Chansom stood up, drawing everyone's attention. Smoke billowed into the sky as he extended his hand, summoning a vast void similar to before. Meanwhile, Chiango manifested a white sphere on his hand. The two of them flicked their fingers simultaneously, causing the objects to levitate and merge together, forming a beautiful green vortex. Upon seeing this, Hyusoman looked up and said, Now this is more like it. In an instant, the two brothers combined again, one following the other, creating an endless cycle. They stood motionless with their backs turned to each other, but suddenly, a turbulent wave engulfed them both, sweeping them away. Observing this, Hyosoman spoke genuinely, they truly are brothers. Hyosoman sat casually on the chair, appearing nonchalant. He began, yes, that's right. Let me tell you the next part of my story, from a long time ago, when I hadn't yet realized why I always met sudden deaths. In another life of Hyosomon, he sat cross-legged on the chair, reading the book and commenting on its contents. This book from the mortal realm is truly fascinating. It describes martial arts in an extraordinary way. Hearing him, Wang Adam, also reading the book, asked, Where did you learn martial arts? He turned and looked directly at her. She replied assertively, Your crimes are unforgivable. Suddenly, he burst into laughter. It's not that simple. I've just arrived in a world of cultivation, so I might be a bit arrogant. They're not wrong, he continued calmly, explaining. Wait until the day I challenge Divin Eastern power, whether I rise or fall, that will be the righteousness. Turning crimes into righteousness, doesn't it sound perfect? She lowered her head sadly and closed her eyes. Divin Eastern power is recognized as the strongest. This battle might be very difficult. After her words trailed off, he someone turned to her, gazing at her calmly yet deeply. Divin Eastern power, after thousands of years, finally sits at the top. It's quite embarrassing, he added. Perhaps something significant is happening outside. Suddenly, a three-legged four-armed servant rushed in, panting heavily, startling Hyosomon. He remained calm and stood still. The servant knelt down, bowing his head to the ground, and hurriedly reported, My lord, outside the door, there are two young men who wish to challenge you. Hyusaman's gaze shifted calmly towards them and replied, You've already said enough. You should be a bit more humble. Hyosaman wondered, then stood up, coldly crossing his arms, and burst into laughter, saying loudly, In this life, becoming a demon lord is no easy feat. I shouldn't have made mistakes with myself too often. I must acknowledge my wisdom after transcending into a divine realm. His expression was serious and imposing. He requested, 
prepare the way for my Lord, and then cheerfully added, lead the way, my young men. Two figures appeared, Chiango and his disciple. As he is Mun walked, he pondered who the two youths wanting to challenge him were. The young man asked inquisitively, Are you the demon lord? Husaman turned and covered his mouth with his hand, whispering, Where are these youths you mentioned? The servant respectfully pointed out the two figures. Husaman was puzzled. You call these youths? Based on age, they should be called youths. The servant replied, and Husaman playfully kicked himself on the head, then laughed joyfully, affirming his judgment based on their appearance. The young man, furious, yelled loudly, Stop wasting words. Are we going to fight or not? Through his actions, Husaman thought, Indeed, this young man is still impetuous. He raised his hand in agreement and called out to him. The young man, enraged and misunderstanding Husaman's gesture, exclaimed, Your gesture means you look down on us three. Husaman sighed and calmly said, Wait for three seconds. The young man still couldn't contain his anger and continued speaking. Tomorrow, you will battle with divine eastern power. If I defeat you, I will undoubtedly be the ruler of the world. His arrogant words echoed, prompting the old man to raise his hand to stop the young man and remind him, My disciple, stay calm and don't fall for his provocation. The scene shifted to the lush, verdant garden of Tayup Chansim, breathtakingly beautiful. Husoman stood before Chiango, who was meditating. With eyes closed, he stood silently there. Husoman addressed the head disciple Chiango. I'm somewhat disappointed in you. He began to slowly open his eyes and listened intently. Unexpectedly, he wasn't a good person either. Moreover, Husoman continued recounting. When you and your brothers came seeking to challenge me, you didn't resist any words, just silently pondering. Husoman remarked in disbelief, You didn't sincerely want to challenge me. You designed a trap for me to fall into. Only then did he begin to resist, laughing loudly and mocking. It's because you're knave. But when he brought this up, I finally remembered who you were. The Lord of Demons, yet easily deceived like this. He stood with his hands in his pockets, silently listening. Behind him was the former demon lord, an incredibly powerful figure with an overwhelming presence. He still hadn't spoken, continuing, I never expected that our grievances hadn't ended, and we'd meet again on this earth. Hyosomun raised his hand, his head filled with many questions. The next day, after defeating Divin Eastern Power and standing at the top, why did he continue? He continued to wave his hand. So you and your brothers also defeated Divin Eastern Power but he found something suspicious. The old man was indeed weaker than himself, but they couldn't defeat him. He asked him, what caused you and your brothers to come to earth? He didn't have to think, he said arrogantly, because of you. The sky darkened on Hyosomun's face, suddenly. Hyosomun was determined to explain slowly. If you hadn't forced us to use the secret technique back then, we wouldn't have come to earth. They laughed aloud. But we don't hate the earth. Husaman's face was angry. I want to ask the leader of Tayap Chansam. You really intend to help them kill me? He quickly answered, No matter who you are, you're not my opponent. At the same time, he took both hands and gave up. He affirmed that they only wanted to maintain a balance, and his words permeated Husaman's whole body. So he was silent, stunned. He was persistent with the idea of killing Tayap Chansam, and this world will not become good so he didn't kill him, at least this world. Chiango recalled the battle of that year as he recounted how, after that day, he and his two brothers were defeated by him. A mysterious figure in all black appeared before them and swiftly overpowered his two brothers. He laughed heartily, remarking how unexpected it was that he could temporarily leave that eerie place amidst his pain. However, Chiango's sibling persisted, questioning him about his identity to which he sternly replied that who he was now didn't matter. He got up, brushing off the dust swirling around, and casually told Chiango's sibling to back off if identity didn't matter. Lowering his voice, he stated that relying solely on them wouldn't defeat him, but he offered to take them somewhere that might help. At the same time, Chiango's sibling gently helped him to his feet, saying, let's go. Others feared he was a madman as he continued explaining that if it weren't for the urgent circumstances, this positive outcome wouldn't have happened. 
Where are my brothers? Where are my brothers? He glared at him, demanding to know what he meant. Without needing many more words, he reached to the sky and summoned a portal, laughing loudly. Wait for the chaos to come there. Unexpectedly, a black hole appeared on his hand, seemingly ready to transport them. This happened. The moment had not yet come, and he had been involved in their whirlwind since then. They panicked, but understood the event. He had used a method to get them to Earth, and it had changed to a different scene. From within the black hole, Chiondo's two siblings were suddenly ejected onto the ground. They were in great pain after the fall. Suddenly, a cautious voice called out. Outside, villagers were chatting amongst themselves about the pleasant weather and asking each other what they were having for dinner. These words made Chiongo's siblings curious about their whereabouts. Where are we? Chiongo hesitantly asked. Are we really brought by that mysterious being to some strange place? Their companion urged them to explore and report back. The scene shifted to the present. Chiongo explained that they had arrived on Earth, a place devoid of supernatural powers at that time. They relied on Slytherin, holding a brilliantly green stone. Chiondo's companion revealed that before they were brought by the mysterious being, Earth had given them something. Chiondo's companion turned to inspect the object, pondering silently, unsure of how to explain it. Hiosoman listened intently as the man spoke, his hands clenched in a circle, his face tense with questions. So, this stone has brought supernatural powers to Earth. Hiosoman asked, his curiosity peaked. Yes, that's correct, the man replied sternly. This stone is now securely kept within the restricted area at the heart of our association. With calm gestures he continued, explaining how the stone could bestow supernatural abilities upon those who possessed it. A volatile element since its arrival on Earth, akin to the moon influencing tides. Hiosoman grew skeptical. Why reveal so much? Are you suggesting an exchange of this stone for my life? He challenged. The man didn't flinch. Do you want it? He asked sharply. Hiosoman's response was succinct, confirming his suspicion that if the stone could bring such powers, why would Tayap Chansom need further plans? What about the human body's cultivation? Hewsome impressed further, as the man closed his eyes, hinting at the stone's imperfection and Tayap Chansom's fears. Glancing at Hyosoman -um with a mix of disdain and suspicion, the man flicked away a speck of dust from his nose. It's embarrassing, but true, he conceded, suggesting that generating new supernatural powers could maintain his authority. Reflecting on the last 200 years, the man's demeanor shifted from defiance to caution, revealing a deeper understanding of the complexities at play. There's more to this story, he stated gravely, asserting that not everyone enjoyed the same freedom as Hiosomon, whose absolute power stood too high, blinding him to the plight of countless others. Hiosomon, feeling powerless, raised his hands in resignation, as if spraying glue, unsure of his next move. In the end, he muttered, it seems you hold the upper hand. With these words, the man, who had been a delivery man for decades, scratched his head. I never wanted to get involved in this, he admitted, his hand now resting on his chin. Yet, here we are, he continued, his voice tinged with resignation, having calculated the consequences of his actions. In a display of determination, he raised his hand defiantly, recalling the indignities of two centuries past, deciding finally to take action today. Hiosoman demanded that the old man calm down, but he couldn't contain himself any longer. He charged forward, shouting about the past two hundred years. Sometimes the river flows, sometimes the person bends. Hewsomen calmly judged, exuding confidence and ambition. At the same time, he gripped his hands tightly, prepared for any bloodshed that might follow. Despite his age, Chiongo's strength hadn't waned. He lunged, grasping the stone and hurling it downward, causing the earth around them to tremble. Hiusomun remained composed. You're spirited for an old man, he remarked, unfazed by Chiango's attempts to provoke him. Angered by Hiosomun's defiance, Chiango exclaimed, Do you know what I detest most about you? Meanwhile, Hiosomun stood calmly before several large stones poised to fall on him. Chiango continued, Your arrogance, looking down on everyone. Yet deep within his soul, Hiosomun sensed his invincible strength. A fierce battle ensued between Chiongo and Hiosoman, neither willing to yield. 
Chiongo grabbed a stone, hurling it at Hiosomon. Despite his robust strength, Hiosomon stood tall, shouting, What is this? He then smiled broadly, assured he wouldn't lose. Hiosomon charged, seizing Chiongo's arm to deflect the attack meant for him. However, weakened by age, Chiongo couldn't withstand the onslaught and was overwhelmed by Hiosomon. Their tumultuous battle echoed throughout the entire neighborhood, yet neither accepted defeat. Chiongo warned, don't underestimate me. Swift as the wind, he lunged at Hiosomon, who remained cool and unaffected, as if nothing had happened. Unbeknownst to Chiongo, Hiosomon lifted his leg, delivering another blow that sent Chiongo flying, causing the earth to shake uncontrollably. The village bore witness to the aftermath of their conflict, marked by scars left behind. Hiosomon stood firm, his fists still ready. Chiongo acknowledged, you're indeed skilled in combat, recognizing strength and weakness, yet a fire still burns within. Before Hiosomon could respond, a black hole appeared, sucking Chiongo into its depths. Hiosomon looked up at the sky dismissively, remarking, there's nothing original about this. Meanwhile, Chiongo, trapped within the black hole, began to gather energy into his hands. Suddenly furious, he raised both hands and shouted loudly, This is the fundamental essence of Mai and Tayup Chansom's purpose. He stood up with his energy flowing through his entire body, seemingly stronger than before, and reverted to his old techniques used against Hyosomon in the past. The chaotic scene continued as Hyosomon calmly remarked, still relying on that old burning technique from 200 years ago. Whether good or bad, it'll be destroyed. Hisumon felt genuinely threatened this time. Enraged, Chiango retorted, it's not like before. Even if I have to shout, it's difficult to avoid death. His words seemed to carry the force of a whirlwind, causing all the stones around to topple into the black hole. Inside the void, Chiango spoke, for 200 years, we've not merely survived day by day. Don't think you're the only one who has grown stronger. Hisumon apologized gently, saying, I don't like the word death. If you want to die, be my guest. Chiongo demanded, What do you call growing stronger? Annoyed, Hiusomon replied, You're asking me to get stronger. His words left Chiongo unsure of how to respond. So he fell silent, contemplating his next move. In a split second, Chiongo clasped his hands together. It's come to this, yet you still underestimate me. He declared, before shouting, Die. His words echoed like a powerful gust, pulling all the scattered stones into the black hole, alarming the villagers outside who cried for help. Hiosomon remained silent, standing amidst their pleas for salvation. He realized Chiongo cared little for the impact on the villagers, continuing to muster his combat energy. Suddenly, he emerged from the black hole once more. Helpless, Hiosomon scratched his head, feeling perplexed. Chiongo swiftly launched himself like lightning, warning the old man to be cautious. The battle resumed with neither willing to concede defeat. Hiusomon reached out to support Chiongo as he fell, but failed to prevent a powerful blow that sent him sprawling, avoiding a catastrophic injury. Seeing this, Hiusomon simply stood with his hands in his pockets, watching Chiongo closely. He approached the fallen man, remarking with annoyance, it's really becoming a nuisance. At the same time, Chiongo turned his face towards the sky, his expression tinged with regret. What grudge could drive you to such extremes? He gently patted Chiongo's arm, saying, It's fortunate your abilities were revealed early. Otherwise, you would have truly troubled me. Suddenly, Hiusomon was drawn into the sky by a golden aura that shimmered brightly. In his hand, he held a beautiful crystal blue sphere. With a solemn expression, he reluctantly stated, I can reluctantly clean up this mess. He then threw the crystal sphere, flooding the entire city with its blue hue. Instantly, a new space was created, filled with infinite matter, effectively sealing the gaping hole without any apparent impact on the outside world. In a large city, people expressed surprise at the strange phenomenon unfolding before them. A woman in green attire spoke up. The old man is playing big this time. I better take the chance to leave or it could get messy. She was interrupted by Chiango, who turned his back and smirked knowingly, ignoring the suspicions of the crowd. With the sky glowing blue, 
causing everything to tremble and then settle. People exclaimed, the earthquake seems to have stopped, just like that glassy layer that caused the tremors. What exactly happened? Inside the crystal sphere, the black hole reappeared, sucking in all remnants of the earlier battle. Witnessing this, Mayomio panicked and sternly declared, I must find Hyosomon. Ilga requested to accompany her, while Wangadam stood silently. Netunu assured them, Go ahead, we'll guard against those guys here. Wangadam, visibly irritated, ordered, Bring Hyosomon back safe and sound. Ilga cheerfully acknowledged and simultaneously, Hyuksum stood behind them. Mayomio and Ilda were startled when he suddenly asked if they were planning to walk there. Without hesitation, he grabbed their waists, saying, I'll take you on a trip. With that, he flew off with the two girls, screaming in fear and surprise. Just moments ago, they had rushed to the scene. They landed amidst a thick cloud of smoke, both tumbling down. They still couldn't accept Hooksam's actions, stubbornly criticizing him. He chuckled. Taking a ride cost another sixty. Ilda looked up at that green light where the chaotic scene, including Hyosomon, lay inside. Seeing this, Neitunu asked Hyosomon, Hyosomon, are you okay? Myomio shouted worriedly, Hyosomon. Hyuksim affirmed, it seems the earthquake just now was caused by that hole. After these words, Hyosomon turned around. The three of them stood, staring intensely at the sky without blinking. Hyosomon continued, I'm fine, it's just that this door isn't easy to close. Ilda gently asked Hyosomon, You're not injured, are you? Mayamio raised her hand to her mouth inquisitively. What can we do to help you? At that moment, he held his head as if contemplating. The two girls stood there with eager expressions, awaiting his response. He pondered with folded arms and finally raised his hand in celebration, joyfully requesting, Make me a cup of instant noodles but not the sour spicy vegetable flavor. Hearing this, the three of them just stared in helpless disbelief, hands hanging loosely. Immediately after, Mayomio reacted loudly, scolding, Hiyosamon, stop joking around. This is serious now. He responded, continuing his work, but muttering under his breath, if you can't help with this matter, I'll handle it myself. It'll probably consume a lot of energy. Anyway, thanks for the cup of noodles. Suddenly, his eyes lit up brightly, raising his hand in joy. That's right, add some sausages too. At that moment, Ilda, holding her heart, sadly asked, Are you really that strong? Are you afraid of getting a stomachache from eating sour spicy vegetable noodles? Next to her, Hyuksam held her shoulders to reassure her, I think you're misunderstanding their thoughts. Surprisingly, the two sisters turned around in unison, saying firmly, Mayomio continued cheerfully. Actually, seeing him like this reassures me. We're doing fine in support. Natunu also smiled and responded. At this moment, Hyusomon is facing the chaos alone. He thinks this is a bit troublesome. The supernatural powers I learned from Teop Chansim can only last so long. Using them without proper control makes me a bit worried. Hyuksim looked up and asked, seeing Hyosomon standing there blankly. What is this kid thinking? Unusually, a hand was placed on his shoulder and said, Little brother, facing any difficulties. Within seconds, he reacted, glancing over at the two surprised girls who exclaimed, You're Hooksam's older brothers. Smiling gently, they praised the beautiful girls and greeted them, while Hooksam joyously jumped up, tears streaming down as he exclaimed, Brothers, where have you been all these years? The second eldest, after a long time, finally reunited with his brothers. He rushed over and hugged them tightly, being affectionate. Ilda stood behind, witnessing this, also expressed happiness along with the second eldest, saying, Hyuka, don't be so girly. Hyuka heard this and asked, How so, brother? Everyone was female in the family. The eldest stood aside and said, It seems your leader needs help. Hyuka responded, Right, elder, and you can also help. We rely on you. Hyuka advanced to grasp his hand, with both holding back tears of joy. Big brother, you must come back, he consoled Hyuka, with all three brothers set to return to the plant, 79. Hearing the elder's words, Hyuka was happily elated. Yes, that's what the elder has said, 
So let's start with the virtual world, replied Kyungwa, addressing Hyuka in the ear. Hyuka then asked what the elder's special ability was, prompting a confident and proud response. I can consume the night's darkness. Consuming shadows, indeed, seems very dark, Ilga said, as the elder asked Hyosomun if he needed any help. I've already asked, Hyosomun replied. Refusing could be impolite. He added with a sigh, and the elder swiftly took off to meet Hyosomun. This time, you've been struggling to take care of my younger brother, Hyosomun thought. In return, my house was taken care of well. The elder asked if he'd like to test his powers if possible, and he bravely replied, It's not a problem, elder. The elder concurred, and the pair of fates suited their own uses, with the elder extending their powers. His skills became a sky full of stars and a final shot of black hole power. There was less and less darkness and dissipation of the bright azure sky. Surprising fear and amazement led to the belief that this practice was unusual. The elder said proudly that the danger has been diffused. Hiwasuman also spoke up, I'm really looking forward to sparring with you now. The two hovered in midair, preparing for a duel when Hyuksum exclaimed, All right, big brothers, it's settled. Let's have a few drinks together. This made the two hesitate, unsure whether to continue or stop. Then the eldest looked at Hiosomon and said, I'm sorry, but this time, I can't spar with you. Hiosomon accepted this with resignation. If not now, then another time, I suppose. The president of the Apurica Association just woke up and walked around. She looked at the animal and said, The protocol is about to be rewritten from scratch. Do you find this amusing? The animal that had been living in Huka City replied, Yes, Keith is holding a picture in his hands. Looking at the picture, he seemed unhappy and muttered about the future. Then he put the picture back where it belonged and said to himself, Anything you want, I'll help you. After that battle, Taeyup Chansim and Chiango fell headfirst onto the ground. Myomyo, Ilda, and Hisoman stood there wondering what to do with him. Suddenly, Two streams of air separated into Taeyup Chansim and Chiongo, causing Ilda to panic and say to Myomyo, What should we do now? Hisuman spoke up. The president should go ahead. If something happens to him, the association will be in chaos. Myomyo clenched her teeth in anger. Suddenly, Hisuman stroked her head and said, I understand your hesitation. It's not Chiongo's fault because of the president's clearance but I still don't think it's a good time now. But I feel that I'm ready now. The envoy suddenly came to find that there was something unusual. She burst into tears, saying, I've always believed that the president would definitely be fair, even if it was his own brother. She cried and said, What is the death of my team member? He was outraged in his heart, and she didn't know how to deal with it. She could only hug her for comfort. Myonyo quickly said, I think I'm in chaos. He replied, don't speculate about this. Wait until he wakes up and ask clearly, or quickly leave. Otherwise, the cleaning department will come soon, and it will be troublesome. Ilga also added to Myomyo, let's follow Hyosamun's advice and leave first. Myomyo reluctantly agreed to leave, but she looked at the faint Taeyup Chansom and asked, what should we do with Purisense's child? Taeyup Chansom. Hyosamun replied, this person is a heinous criminal. Let the association handle what he left behind here. After that, everyone left, leaving the dead Taeyup Chansom behind. With the help of Kuksum, Myomyo, and Hyosomun took Chiango away and temporarily hid him at Hyosomun's house. Edward stayed at home playing video games all day. Due to the earthquake, he ran outside and wondered if it had started from here. It didn't seem quite like a natural disaster. He swung his sword to clear away the rocks. There were too many annoying ones to clear. Suddenly, his sword touched something soft. He dug out the rocks and was shocked to find an old man lying there. Tariak Tayopchansim, what happened here? He suddenly realized that this was the result of a battle. Even more astonishing was knowing that Tariak Tayopchansim, so strong, had been defeated. This was big news. Suddenly, a car pulled up and a group of people from the sanitation department stepped out. The team leader said, assess the casualties, clean up the scene, get to work. Nyang Diuk muttered quietly, this shouldn't happen. He recalled running to Chiango's office, 
worriedly opening the door and not finding Chiango inside. He wondered where the president would go. The gang leader looked at him and asked, What are you doing here? He hesitated before replying, Tayap Chansom, Purisense's child. The gang leader asked, The essence of what? Nyang Diok immediately informed the association, Tayap Chansom, Purisense's child, has been captured. Nyang Diok stammered, I'll do it immediately. The gang leader turned to him and asked, Who did this? He hesitated before replying, I don't know. The gang leader approached Tayap Chansom and gently touched him, saying, He's just unconscious. That's good. He reminded himself, No matter who it is, a leader's child, Purisense's child, can be invited for tea. Far away, someone was hiding behind the bushes, secretly taking photos of the two. He smiled silently, knowing it was hot news. Then he quietly left. Hiosoman's house was almost completely destroyed. He was busy repairing it when his mother stepped out and asked, Are you not hurt today, my child? I'm really worried. He replied, I'm fine, mom. It's just that our garden suffered serious damage. His father reassured them, No worries, we'll fix it tomorrow. Today, we should rest properly. Hearing this, he felt it was right and hugged his child, feeling a bit sleepy and sad. Then, his parents went to bed first, and he went inside. His mother silently chuckled to herself. The old man's plan might be starting. After a tiring day, a new day had begun. Suddenly, the roof collapsed, causing a big shock. A faint cry came from inside the house. Ilda panicked and rushed out, stammering, No, no, she's not here. Half awake, Myonio stepped out and asked, What's going on? She turned around and stammered, Mary Mary isn't here. Suddenly, Soriok rushed over from behind and hugged Ilda gently, saying, She's gone. Myonio, angered, asked, Gone where? Soriok chuckled and explained, I woke up at midnight to get some water. Just then, I saw her sneaking away. Myonio, furious, asked, Are you saying you watched Mary run off? She replied, yeah, she seemed really strange to me. Ilda muttered, strange? How? Soriuk continued, the vibe she gave off was so different, like she had become someone else. At that moment, I felt a strange sensation, almost supernatural. I couldn't react in time, so I just watched her go. Mayamyo, holding her head in worry, said, she probably won't cause any major trouble. This time, Purisense's child is considered eliminated, Ilga said decisively. I'll take the remaining people to the association and follow orders. In the basement of Hyosoman's house, he was conversing with Chiango. He asked Chiango how his sleep was last night, holding a cup of tea. Why hide it from me? He asked. Why disrupt the balance of the earth now? After 200 years of caution? Why would I want to break this equilibrium? He looked at him seriously and said, That's not what you want to ask. He replied, What I want to ask may not be what you want to answer, but regarding the chaos about the mysterious being, you probably know more than I do. The leader asked him, Have you ever thought your memory might be wrong? His face serious, the atmosphere around him became solemn. Last night, I really considered this possibility. Chiango said, I suspect that mysterious person is waiting for something, and their target is you. Upon hearing the response, he was satisfied and said, Knowing this is enough. You may go now. The older man looked at him with suspicion and asked, Is that all? He replied, Tayap Chansom suddenly acted. Something must have happened. I think if someone is behind this, they probably hope something happens to you. But lately, human nature has been a bit contradictory. I can't always agree with her thoughts. The chairman stood up, preparing to leave, and left him with a remark. Even if you let me go, the balance has already been disrupted. He also stood up slowly and replied, I understand your intention. In fact, self-image, Purisense's child, has a significant role in stabilizing other forces. What the association can't do, self-image can. As long as they don't exceed their limits in creating disruption, they can still be controlled. The chairman interjected, The association actually hopes that Purisense's child can always exist. He placed his hand on the chairman's shoulder and sincerely said, 
but with your experience, maintaining this balance is somewhat arcade and impermanent. It's even worse when reality isn't an art form. As chairman, you have a responsibility to find a new balance. The things he said seemed to shake the chairman. He continued, I will monitor you. Both of them burst into laughter, filling the room. Afterward, Hugh Soman took two subordinates of the association and threw them onto the car. When everything was settled, he invited the chairman into the car. The chairman slowly stepped into the car and reminded him to return to work carefully. He replied to the chairman, All right, I'll return once my amio is done. It seems my parents have something to negotiate with us. Then she drove away. Throughout the journey, her face showed uneasiness. The chairman angrily called her name, and she replied, For now, I don't want to talk to you. Although Hyusomun said he could continue as chairman, it didn't mean she forgave him. The chairman's face saddened, blaming himself inwardly. The old man might have truly made a mistake. The more Mayomio thought about it, the angrier she became, pressing the accelerator. Perhaps you still want to make excuses, she said angrily. The chairman calmly replied, No, I don't want to make excuses. It's just that I haven't thought it through yet. She angrily reproached him. Because you haven't thought it through, my teammates lost their lives. I've been living in pain for these three years. Do you understand? It's not your fault. She shouted, It's all because of your indulgence. Hearing that, he fell into deep thought about himself. But Myomio kept on blaming him, being in the same space with you. I am very miserable. I admired you so much. The chairman sat on one side, just listening to her scolding inside. She said, if this continues, we have nothing more to say. After finishing this matter, I will withdraw from the association. A flight was arriving, and Hiyosomon was slowly stepping out when suddenly Mayomio hurriedly shouted, Hiyosomon, the car is here already. Don't dawdle anymore. She ran over and kicked him. The others have already started. Hurry up. She scolded while pulling him towards everyone. Ilga was sitting in the car, seeing the two of them. She happily shouted, Hiyosomon, Mayomio, hurry up. Hiyosomon thought to himself, I just finished a battle. Shouldn't I be resting at home? What's wrong with these people? The battle with Purisense's child had just ended less than a week ago. The group had already gone on a trip to Heilam. Hiyosomon thought, oh well, I might as well go along with them peacefully. At the Sangrela Hotel, Mayomio and Ilda were already dressed in their sexy, cool outfits, preparing for a wonderful vacation. Mayomio was sitting and looking at her phone, suddenly worried, wondering why he was the last to arrive. Ilga spoke up, Sister Mayomio, Hiyosomon just separated from us for a moment, and you're already eager to see him. Caught off guard, she stammered, What? Everyone else has already gone to the beach, I'm just afraid they've been waiting too long. She pointed back at Ilga and asked, Don't you also feel anxious waiting? Ilga, embarrassed, her face turned red, stammered back, No, I don't, I just always liked biting straws. Mayomio jumped over and hugged her, happily saying, Even when you talk, you stammer, I'm not saying anything about you. At this point, Ilga looked like a tomato. She was so shy and said, Sister Mayomio, you always tease me. Suddenly, Hiyusomun walked in, seeing the two of them tangled together, he asked, What are you two doing? They turned their heads and asked, You haven't changed at all. Even walking downstairs is so slow. He replied, I have nothing to do with it. But a masked person stepped out from behind him. Mayomio asked, Who is that? He spoke up, It's me, Edward, the Prince of Love and Beauty. Seeing him dressed like that, she asked, Why are you dressed like that outside? It's 37 degrees, aren't you afraid of the heat? Edward explained, I'm being followed. Ilda curiously asked, Is it a bad person? He looked around searching and then whispered to Mayomio and Ilda, No, it's the paparazzi. Hilasomun was looking for information on his phone, then showed the two of them a photo of Edward being secretly taken. This kid was captured by the paparazzi in the scene where he defeated Purisense's child. Now he has become the strongest in legend. Hiyusomun laughed and said, What's so bad about that? Fame and fortune falling from the sky. No need to worry about food and clothing for the rest of your life. This is more comfortable than being a member of the association. Edward stepped forward and shouted, 
I serve the people with all my heart. Ilda's eyes sparkled as she smiled. Just explain clearly to the media and everyone, isn't that enough? Mayamio responded, I'm just afraid he won't explain it clearly. Ilda asked, Why is that? Hio Soman added, Now, Edward is like a golden billboard. To some people, he is the key to wealth. People don't care about Edward as an individual. What they need is entertainment and topics. So, whether Edward explains or not, it doesn't matter anymore. Edward pouted and defended himself. I really was just passing by. Suddenly, a reporter appeared out of nowhere. Mr. Edward, is that you? He quickly jumped behind Hyosoman to hide, exclaiming, How could they recognize me? Hyosoman said, Firstly, it's not necessarily a good thing. Edward pleaded tearfully, Hyosoman, please save me. I've already escaped to Hailam, I'm really out of options. Hyosoman pointed and said, Save you? I think you should just run first. They're catching up. The paparazzi were getting closer, shouting questions. Mr. Edward, can you detail how you defeated Teriak Teyapchansom? Mr. Edward, are you merry? Mr. Edward, don't run. The reporter's constant yelling made Edward panic and stammer. It's really not me, it's not me. Ilga suddenly stepped forward, I can hold them off. Can you? Husaman asked, won't it drain your energy? She replied, no, it will be fine. That previous fight felt very easy. With that, Husaman grabbed Edward by the collar and ran quickly. Follow me, Ilda will handle them. Ilga watched the two of them run, giggling at the sight of their clumsy escape. After successfully escaping, the two were taking a break when suddenly Mary appeared behind them. Husaman, I came to find you. The crowd of reporters was rushing towards them. Ilda, startled, tried to calm them. Please, everyone, wait a moment. But her words seemed useless as the reporters continued to charge like a herd of horses. She sighed, realizing she had no other choice. She snapped her fingers, casting a spell that created a heart shape from cherry blossom peels, mesmerizing everyone. The reporters stood in awe, one of them recognizing the beauty of the peels. Aren't these cherry blossoms? They're so beautiful. Everyone was entranced by her magical display. Ilda smiled, losing herself in the dreamy scene for a moment. At the beach, everyone was wearing very cool swimsuits. Come and catch me. Someone shouted, Your new swimsuit is really beautiful. Yes, come play in the water with me, another called. Hurry up, why are you so impatient? Hyosoman suddenly asked Ilda, Where are my parents? She replied, they are watching the match at the Dolphin Bay with your sister. Then Edward asked Ilda, did you really manage to hold them off? They won't chase me anymore, right? She smiled and responded, it's only temporary. You're so hot right now, for sure when one group leaves, another will come. You better take care of yourself. He burst into tears. Why does this kind of thing happen to me, the prince? Handsome and elegant, it's really unfair. Ilga walked off to find Mayomio. She shouted, Sister Mayomio, let's go swimming. All right, I'm tired of listening to Edward bragging anyway, Mayomio responded. Edward was still clinging to Hyosoman, crying, I'm so sincere. Being number one is really just a path to death. Hyosoman played along, comforting his friend, I understand you, Hyosoman, my best friend, I love you to death. Mayomio, looking at the two of them, exclaimed, boring. Then she turned to Ilda, let's go to the beach. Yes, Ilda replied, and the two of them happily ran and jumped on the beach, looking very joyful and happy. Sister Mayomio, slow down a bit. They stripped off their outer layers, causing the young men around to gape and have nosebleeds at the sight of their sizzling figures. The two of them played in the water as if they were the only ones on the beach. On the shore, Hyusomun was still with Edward. Hyusomun said, Sorry, buddy, I still have things to do. Then he stood up, ready to leave. Edward, bewildered, asked, Huh, what's going on? Hyusomun threw off his shirt, saying, Playing with my sisters, and with a cheerful face, ran towards the two of them, leaving Edward scared, No, don't leave me here. Mary was standing behind a tree feeling shy and embarrassed in her super cool and very sexy swimsuit. Is it too revealing? She wondered. 
After having fun and relaxing with the beautiful sisters, Hyu Soman leisurely walked back to the shore. He sat down on the sand to rest, thinking, So traveling is this fun. Mayomio came over to him. Have you never traveled before? Hyusoman lay down to sunbathe. It's not that I don't know, he said. Everything I do can easily lead to sudden death. In one lifetime, my profession was a tour guide. Hyusoman closed his eyes and reminisced about that time. Ladies and gentlemen, where we are visiting now is a masterpiece of nature, he would say. Unexpectedly, a slight carelessness led to him becoming the tour guide champion of the year and directly dying. Just with a few words, Mayomio felt a chill run down her spine. In that case, I really don't dare to travel anymore, she said. More and more people started coming ashore. So Diuk, full of excitement, said, A few girls just passed by and said the beach volleyball game was really exciting. How about we go watch? Soon, the whole group was at the volleyball court, and laughter echoed throughout the area. Mary managed to get the ball and passed it to her teammate. Mayomio jumped high and struck the ball towards the opponents with such force that they couldn't react in time, and it landed with a thud. The spectators cheered, great shot. One guy, with heart-shaped eyes and drooling, exclaimed, great shot. His girlfriend immediately pinched his cheek. People are watching the game. What are you looking at? He cried out in pain. I'm watching the game too. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Natu Niu turned to Wang Adam. Let's play the next match. She asked, are we playing volleyball normally? Natunu explained his plan. I will create a world where everyone temporarily can't use their skills. Ilga arrived and hugged Wang Adam, sister. Playing on the beach is so much fun. I want to come again. Natunu suggested, does everyone want to play the next game? It's up to you, Mayonio said, appearing out of nowhere. By the way, where are Hyuksum and his two brothers? She wasn't sure about them. Watching the game for two minutes, then those three got bored and probably went to play in the water. Soryak seized the opportunity to get closer to Hyo Soman, be on my team. He maintained a nonchalant expression. Who wants to join? She raised her hand and counted. Including you, there are ten people. He summoned thought for a moment. The number is not enough. A hesitant voice spoke up. Can I join too? I also want to play. Hisamen and Soryuk turned to look at the person. It was Mary, the daughter of Purescence. She shyly lowered her head, not daring to make eye contact. Don't look at me like that. Hisamen kept his eyes on her. You, she sincerely explained, I don't have any ulterior motives. Her face turned red and tears welled up in her eyes. I just want to. Just want to. It took a while for her to continue, just want to play with everyone. Mary hesitated, feeling an unnamed fear creeping in. What if there's a penalty? She thought to herself, wanting to add an element of mystery to the game. She decided to wait until the match ended before voicing her excitement, believing that such anticipation could provide additional motivation. Suddenly, so one appeared radiantly. Hello, everyone, she greeted cheerfully. Mayomio was curious and asked Sowine, Why are you here? Sowine replied half jokingly, I heard Headmaster Lang resigned, and I haven't taken a break in a long time. So, I decided to come to the beach for some fun. Mayomio pressed further, Is it just a coincidence, or did you plan this beforehand? Sowine remained calm and replied, I know how to read Headmaster Lum's mind very well, but I have a newly developed shield that allows me to conserve energy. He someone interjected into their tense atmosphere. It doesn't matter what the purpose is. We just finished a great game and are short one player. So Wang, if you want to join, now's the perfect time. The referee announced the rules. The first team to reach five points wins. After dividing into teams of six, everyone was ready. The referee blew the whistle loudly. Natunu immediately activated her world skills, limiting everyone to their inherent abilities. She reminded Hiosomun, you need to control yourself well. He'd assured her, I'll try. The ball was served, and Wang Adam leaped high to strike it forcefully. The ball zoomed across the court with incredible speed. However, Hiosomun skillfully intercepted it with his foot, passing it to his teammate Soryok. 
she swiftly received the ball and launched a powerful counterattack towards Tiu Duck. Despite gritting his teeth and attempting to stand firm, Tiu Duck slipped and fell backward, unable to hold his ground. He passed the ball to Natunu, who jumped high to catch Hyosamun's pass. The intense volley continued, with each player showcasing their skills within the limits set by Natunu's world. The game was fast paced and exhilarating, keeping everyone on their toes. The audience watched in astonishment as I continued relentlessly. Then came the dizzyingly fast exchanges making the atmosphere hotter than ever. Ilga assisted with the ball, even lying down on the sand to save it. Discussions echoed nonstop, nearly becoming unbearable. The referee scratched his head in confusion, unable to tell if there was any contact with the ground. I blew the whistle whenever appropriate, after a long while finally seeing Mary get a chance to touch the ball. Hyusoman shouted for me, everyone's eyes turning towards him. A protagonist's aura radiated around him, mesmerizing everyone. Here, catch! shouted those who supported me. Hyusoman smiled triumphantly, the strength in his arm multiplying several times. One decisive move would determine victory or defeat. The ball shot like a rocket, accompanied by a sinister smile. Zodiac stared at him with eyes like fiery bullets, angrily scolding him for ruining a good situation. In a swift movement, Hyusoman jumped aside to avoid the collision. A blast occurred, dust and sand spraying wildly, while Hyusoman landed gracefully. The referee was buried in the sand, everyone trembling, mouths unable to form words. Natunu criticized, didn't I tell you to control your strength a bit? How can we continue like this? Mayamio glared at him with eyes blazing, angrily scolding him for messing up a good situation. A large pit appeared in the middle of the beach. Hugh someone shamelessly said aloud, Still far from done yet, or should I bring back the sand? So Wang cheerfully approached, I guess the match can't continue anymore, right? Or shall I invite everyone for a barbecue? Natunu furrowed his brows, observing this suspicious character. He took out many food tickets, mostly offering free meals, whether they liked it or not. Isn't it? The night has fallen at the beach, with the sound of waves gently soothing our ears. Hyosomon's hand suddenly ignited with a flame, illuminating a corner of the sky. So Wan was surprised. Do you also have fire abilities? Our guild records don't mention this. His other hand immediately produced small ice crystals, offering to make ice water for him. Hyosomon stood there motionless, contemplating whether to conceal this matter. Aren't you afraid? I casually replied, I quite enjoy troublesome situations now. His eyes flickered behind the flames, revealing an unexpected sentiment. Guild leader So Wan, do you want to bother me? I remained indifferent, stating, I don't like to be bothered. Myomio was busy gathering firewood, all the while admonishing the department head, So Wan. I knew I shouldn't have trusted your dinner invitation, she muttered under her breath. Ilga followed closely behind, adding cheerfully, I actually find this quite enjoyable, almost like cooking outdoors. Her face lit up with happiness as she reminisced. When I was young, I never had the chance to join school outdoor activities. Today feels like fulfilling that childhood wish. Mayamio wiped away a tear, embracing Ilda warmly. Your childhood must have been so tough, Wangadam. How did you manage? Ilda smiled reassuringly, I got by just fine. So Wang put on a pitiful expression, Lam, or rather, the former department head. Whether it's good or bad, I've always provided food. Offering a meal can be seen as hospitality. Are you trying to manipulate a child? Suspicion crept into her mind. She cautioned Hyosomon, you should be careful, to which So Wang added, I might make you do something else next time. His thoughts were clearly at odds with hers. I realize So Wang isn't trying to provoke me. He must have some other intention. Upon hearing other intention, he couldn't help but chuckle. I must say, the former department head has changed quite a lot. Myomio felt annoyed at being addressed as Myomio or Sister Myomio all day long. Truly detestable. Netunu quietly approached unnoticed by anyone. Everyone seems to be having a good time. May I join? Seeing So Wang, she remained silent, no longer saying a word. He said he wanted a world for the two of them, so they left. 
We and the others have almost finished preparing the food. When should we start the campfire? Hyosomon raised a finger. Now that the food is ready, let's begin. Everyone gathered around the campfire, enjoying the feast. The fire crackled and burned brightly, echoing with laughter and joy. Hyosomon finished a large beer in one gulp, adding to the merry atmosphere. Suddenly, So Wang suggested a fun game. How about late night storytelling with the wind howling? Or shall we share some ghost stories? Sodiak seized the opportunity, clinging tightly to his older sister. I'm scared. Someone shot him a cold glance and threw him a curt word. Natu Nu voiced her opinion. Ghost stories are too childish. It's better to experience them firsthand. Experience them firsthand? He quickly caught on. Natu Nu wants to create a virtual scene. It's rare to have such an exciting opportunity. I also enjoy watching horror movies. She looked around and asked, Are you all interested? Summer nights by the beach. Haunted houses can be quite thrilling, don't you think? 